Welcome back to the channel folks, Mr. Age here for a rundown of an LA Times article which had Anthony and Joe Russo, the directing duo, the, uh, the brother directors of Avengers Endgame. So of course, full spoilers, if I, you know, I don't know why I have to say that, but yeah, full spoilers, the title indicates full spoilers, full spoilers ahead, you have been warned, so bugger off if you don't want spoilers, and if you stayed for whatever reason, don't you know, bitch about it. But hey, let's get into the spoilers. Now, they were asked, what was it like shooting Robert Downey Jr.'s final scenes as Iron Man? And Anthony replied, Joe and I always say Robert is the hardest working actor we've ever encountered. He is very dedicated to his craft and puts an enormous amount of his psychic energy into his performance. As you can imagine, this character is as much of an iconic experience for him as it is for anybody in the audience. That shot where he says, I am Iron Man and snaps his fingers was the very last shot of the entire movie. We shot that back in January during the final reshoots and we all walked away from the movie after he performed that moment. Oddly enough, we shot it in Raleigh Studios in LA, where 12 years earlier, on an adjacent stage, he'd done his screen test for Iron Man. So it was really a sense of completion and coming full circle. Now, to address whether Loki is alive, because of course he you know, ran off, scampered off with the Tesseract, uh, and they give a really BS response. Loki could absolutely still be alive in an alternate timeline. I mean, for God's sake, come on. Marvel, you're supposed to have an overarching narrative. Why? The directors don't even know. Come on, please. Of course, I'm very much certain he is going to be still alive because we've got a Disney Plus TV series with Loki. Um, so, yeah, of course he's still alive. They were asked directly how long have Captain America and Iron Man's endings been planned, which I find this quite interesting. They actually revealed it was about three years Joe Russo said that the first thing we did when we sat down to figure out the story we were going to tell was decide on the end of the movie. We had to know where Endgame was going in order to tell the best story possible. It's how you maximize the drama and character architecture. So, in about three years, they managed to keep their mouths sealed for so, so long, which is crazy. Uh, obviously, you know, Avengers Endgame has smashed the box office, so they were asked very specifically, how do you feel about the record-breaking box office numbers? Uh, clearly, they weren't going to be rubbing their hands together going, oh, we love it. Uh, but they did reply, for us, the box office is really just reflective of the audience's appreciation. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves because we love these characters and these stories. We grew up on the mythology, collecting comic books, and these were the movies that we wanted to see, and now we've gotten to make them. As kids, we walked out of Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, or Indiana Jones, having had really profound spectacle, pop culture, cinematic experiences. We really wanted and were committed to giving that experience to audiences around the world with this movie. And you can bet your ass they're super, super happy because they are rolling in it, absolutely swimming in the cash. They were asked why was Harley Keener at Tony Stark's funeral. That's the, the dude that's just kind of stood there looking a bit strange that everyone was confused about. Uh, it's the chap from Iron Man 3. We were thinking about who was important in Tony's life just on a very grounded level. And that was a character who'd shared a special moment in time with Tony. It felt organic for him to be there. Now, of course, the funeral scene, which is in reference to you know, the previous question, had a lot of big name actors there. Were they all present for that scene or were there some stand-ins? Uh, which I, I've, this is more of an industry question. Uh, and I do find this quite interesting. They were apparently all there. Uh, it took them all day to do that one shot. They had to have very specific stand-ins just so they could plan it out and have doubles prior to executing the shot that day. But I do find it interesting that they were all there. you got to think, logistically speaking, that is a very, very hard card to pull with everyone's uh, schedules. Really, really quite difficult. So nice to see that they were actually all there and there wasn't some CGI blocking and things like that. Now, they were asked, do the filmmakers understand the time travel rules that they themselves set down. Uh, just discussing the time travel things, which in fairness actually touches on the multiverse, which of course we are going to be seeing in Spider-Man. They say, in the movie, the Hulk is very explicit about what our rules are, which is you cannot change the present by altering the past. 
All you can do by going to the past and for a character like Captain America living in the past is create an alternate future. So this is a world in which alternate timelines exist. Which, again, is a plot hole. Uh, for multiple reasons, because the writers explain something different, no, the directors are explaining something different, the characters in the movie explain something different, and then in the movie they showed something different. It's all well and good saying that Hulk said that, but yes, Captain America lived in the past. Did he suddenly cross dimensions into a brand new timeline to pop up at the end? How does that work? Uh, so, yes, very, very interesting, uh, you know, use of time travel and multiverse theories there. Very, very interesting. I would be really keen to see what Spider-Man Far From Home does to address all of that. Now, they were asked, you know, how challenging it was to introduce time travel to the MCU, which I always figure is, without a shadow of a doubt, a universe breaking introduction but they replied back to the future is one of our favorite films and the rules of that movie are ubiquitous they have informed pop culture for 40 years and we wanted to do something different we didn't realize how complicated it would be to create new rules and have people go with us but we learned very early on in the test screenings that people are really committed to those back to the future rules if you shoot yourself you should die we spoke with a few physicists and there's a lot of theories about how time travel could work we chose the multiverse theory. So again, just a callback, I guess, or a call forward to Spider-Man Far From Home there. We are going to be seeing a multiverse, uh, which may or may not happen, because, of course, Mysterio may or may not be being deceptive. Now, there was some discussion, of course, about bringing certain characters to the end uh, in this particular chapter of the MCU and they said it's a really complicated mix of emotions for us. This is among our favorite work we've ever done as filmmakers. So to get to the end of it, there's a sadness to walk away. But at the same time, we really firmly believe that all good stories have to have stakes and endings. So for us to have the opportunity to tell the final chapter in that 22 movie long story was an amazing opportunity and a privilege. Also, it was a tough story to tell I think for Joe and I, this is a moment where we've lost control of the movie and we've turned it over to the audiences and there's a sense of relief in that for sure. Now, of course, we do lots of time hopping in this movie and there were some comments made about the challenges of, of course, revisiting the past uh, in the MCU. And they said that probably just recreating the sequences in a way that was accurate was difficult. Chris Pratt dancing on Vormir. There's some footage from seven years ago and there's some footage from him now, and they actually had to intercut it all, which is great, it's quite surprising to hear, but you can't really tell, to be perfectly honest. And they also say that people change, their looks change, so we really had to recreate everyone's look when Downey is watching the Avengers in that final moment with Loki, where he says, I'll have that drink now. That's all of our current actors being made up to look like they did in the first Avengers. It was fun for us to create a different perspective for the audience. While Guardians opens up with this really joyful sequence where Quill is dancing his way through the alien planet, the truth of it may have been that that was all in his mind and he's really just another guy singing out of tune to his Walkman. Which, I mean, we got that, we got that in there anyway, so I'm a bit surprised that they're even commenting on that, but whatever. Uh, they also touched on their thoughts on Thor The Dark World by saying, well, it's hard to judge. This is a mosaic of storytelling. It's an experiment in narrative that has spanned over 10 years and 11 franchises. I think it's hard to judge anything until the ending has been told. It's like reading a book and going, I didn't care for that chapter before you get to see the end of the book. Sometimes when you get to the end, it gives you perspective on all the different chapters. So hopefully people can go back and see that movie in a different light now based on its significance to Thor and his character. That is a very diplomatic response to a trash film. And then, of course, we get the comments about the uh, very gratuitous women team-up moment. And they say that looking back on the entire road that the MCU has travelled, it just struck us how many amazing female characters have entered the landscape. I think it was really, for us, a moment of celebration and acknowledgement of the intensity and empowerment in that. I mean, that's fine. You know, fine answer, I guess. But hey, look, here you go. Here's a quick rundown. What do you think of any of these answers? Do you feel some of them are a cop-out? Do you feel that the time travel multiverse theory is a plot hole? Because again, how did Captain America get back to the future of an alternate timeline? Doesn't really make any sense, but whatever. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, please do hit subscribe. And to stay up to date on the world of pop culture and movie news, crush that bell notification icon. Guys, thanks so much for watching. I've been Miss H. Take care.